What's going on there guys? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here with an update video on this Sunday evening, December 19th, 2021's a date, straight up 7 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Latest quake on the globe, a 4.4 earthquake here around the Indonesia area. This earthquake coming in somewhat deep at 148 kilometers below the surface. Let's go ahead and check out some activity around the globe here on the latest USGS map here. You can see that 4.4 uh, coming in to the uh, Indonesia area, just right outside the area where we've seen that 7.3 earthquake strike uh, oh, within the last week or so in that region. We did see some further activity ramp up throughout the day today around Laos with a 5.6 at 10 kilometers below the surface. This earthquake felt over a broad area of the region Historical data does show some activity throughout history in this region and uh, some of that activity can get uh, on the larger size as well. Looks like potential uh, at least five to six magnitude earthquake possibilities within this region where uh, this epicenter hit today. Uh, looking at some other activity here uh, just off just off the coast down here. Uh, we've got a 5.3 that kicked up prior to that 5.6, kind of working its way up the towards the north as far as the pressure movement goes. We are still looking at potential movement further to the west here. We just haven't seen it in the past two days. That includes areas of Afghanistan, Iran, and areas around the Mediterranean. Just not a whole lot of significant movement uh, at all right now, but uh, still keep an eye on this region here. It's been awfully quiet over the last 24 hours, actually more than that, 48 hours or so in that region. Uh, looking over here towards the Fiji Islands area, we did have that 6.3 that we uh, talked about a little bit this morning on the update video. This one was pretty shallow since then. We haven't seen any further back building here of deep earthquakes. In fact, uh, things just kind of migrating their way up in this fashion up around this area. Uh, we did have a little one around the uh, Vanuatu area, 4.9, 36 kilometers for that earthquake. Over here towards the South Sandwich Islands here, 5.0, struck earlier, uh, earlier, way earlier, 35 kilometers into the subduction zone. Seems like we at least have been getting a four or a five magnitude earthquake uh, on any given day in this region. So activity has uh, continued down there and it will for some time following that uh, large eight pointer uh, a couple months back. One area that has picked up a little bit of uh, movement is, is the South America region right around Chile and uh, looks like a little bit of activity in the Bolivia area as well. Cluster of fours within this region here on this map. The majority of it some pretty deep earthquake movement along the Peru-Chile Trench. 211 kilometers for that 4.5 up north in Bolivia. Pretty uh, deep earthquake movement there along that trench area. Puerto Rico, not a whole lot of movement uh, around this area over the last 24. Just a couple sporadic uh, earthquakes kicking up. What else we got? Eastern part of the country. Let's go ahead and go to the all magnitudes here. You can see uh, pretty much clear on the east. Arkansas did have some further activity and also up around Illinois. A couple of small microquakes around Oklahoma City as well. Texas. Earthquake country in Texas, around Pecos, Texas, all quiet. Not any movement at all to report in this region of the states. Arizona, that was from last night, I believe, that 3.0. <clears throat> Should be dropping off the globe here pretty soon. Uh, over the last 24 hours, some further movement up and down the southern part of California and also the Gulf of California, where they had that 4.8 earlier this morning. Things kind of mellowing out a little bit along the San Jacinto Fault area. We did see some activity around Pomona, Ontario area of, of uh, the uh, Southern California region. Santa Ana also had a little earthquake here uh, just to the east around Foothill Ranch, 1.2 at 16 kilometers. Somewhat uh, deeper movement into that area. No swarming to report in Salton Sea or the Brawley Seismic Zone, the uh, Ridgecrest area up north here around the Coso Volcanic Range. Uh, things kind of mellowing out. We haven't seen any further earthquake activity ramping up. Uh, this was from earlier today. We were watching a uh, pretty good swarm of movement here around this area of Southern California, which includes some uh, 
Well, some volcanic activity out there, uh, at least historically. You can see, looking at this map, uh, no doubt past uh, volcanic activity up and down this region of the, uh, of the state. Not a whole lot to report around the Antelope or the Tonopah area. A little bit of movement outside of the Long Valley Super Volcano down here in the Volcanic Tablelands. Other than that, uh, eastern crest of Sierra Nevadas look pretty quiet. Uh, some activity along the San Andreas Fault. That was earlier today. Haven't seen a whole lot of renewed movement whatsoever along the west coast or the Intermountain West region. This is the last 24 hours of uh, earthquake activity and the all magnitudes here. So things are very quiet up and down uh, for the most part the entire the entire western part here of the states and up through Canada. Uh, although this region here in Alaska is seeing a little bit of heightened movement inland and into the subduction zone. You can see things kind of kicking up here within the last hour, within the last 24 hours to be more specific uh, into the Alaska area. Of course this subduction zone here, the Alaska Aleutian Megathrust area. That's the uh, North American Pacific Plate interaction. Accumulation rates down here along that trench. Of course as you go westward uh, you run into more accumulated stress results or stress um, accumulation there with the uh, numbers fault systems all all throughout alaska stretching up past fairbanks shows a uh, specific um, directional faults here kind of where we're seeing this activity let's go ahead and shoot up here to alaska kind of where we're seeing this activity ramp up here to the north north of fairbanks into this area right here uh, looking at a uh, little swarm of movement throughout the land. I did go back here and looked at some historical activity. Uh, 7.0 earthquake activity and above. Of course, down south here around the uh, subduction zone, this area sees some mega quakes. There's a reason why they, why they call that the mega thrust area. And of course, 1964, the 9.2 earthquake down there uh, did some major damage. But up north here, where we're kind of looking at, the only earthquake that I've seen within this region where we're seeing that earthquake activity today uh, was a 7.1 earthquake back in 1958 uh, within that same region of uh, the activity we're kind of watching today. So I'm not for sure if it's aftershock sequences or, or what, but we do get some larger earthquakes inland up here and uh, north of Fairbanks. Of course, Fairbanks around this area did see some activity uh, back in the uh, earlier 1900s. It did have a 7.9 within this area here of the uh, state, the Alaska Range. North here around Fairbanks, some of the activity is uh, a little bit on the older side, 1937 and uh, 1904 around the Fairbanks area, seen some low seven magnitude earthquakes striking things up out there. So uh, no doubt, even though it's a ways away from the subduction zone here, these inland earthquakes uh, can get rather large up there for sure. So keep an eye on this region. Also way over here to the west, a little swarm of movement around, uh, looks like a white mountain, 10 kilometers, and it looks like one at least 5.4 kilometers, 3.4 and a 3.1. Uh, Looking at satellite imagery here, of course, shows some clouds and uh, obviously some beautiful, beautiful countryside up there. Uh, obviously, I don't see any uh, fracking operations, but uh, definitely uh, kind of want to visit that area of Alaska. I was up there this time uh, not last year, it was back in uh, 2016, 2017, somewhere around there, uh, up in the uh, Anchorage and Fairbanks area, but I never got to go way up north here into the northwest. Uh, like I said, I only went up to Fairbanks and then uh, turned back around and drove that beautiful uh, scenic highway down to Anchorage, but there's so much of Alaska to explore. It's absolutely beautiful up there. And uh, cold, but you know what? I'm a cold weather guy. I love it. Bring on the cold. Uh, over here around the Japan area, not a whole lot going on here, folks. Just a little earthquake uh, on the Kuril Islands, 4.4, 4, 121 kilometers deep into the, the uh, subduction zone here. That's about the only one showing up here within this region. A little one south of Tokyo. And uh, activity around the Philippines kicking up a little bit. But overall, dynamically, things are kind of toning down western part and the eastern part of the uh, Pacific Plate here. Uh, trimmer map tonight has remained uh, somewhat quiet. 
Looks like uh, at least. Looks like there was a little activity here earlier this morning, and then things just dynamically died off. I'm wondering if it has something to do with that uh, six pointer that kicked off in the uh, Fiji Islands area. This thing struck at, uh, what was that, 1628 UTC time? Um, not for sure on this timestamp here. I would have to check the uh, UTC time on that, but things just immediately dropped off on the trimmer act on the um, Cascadia trimmer for some reason. It was going pretty strong the last couple days and then uh, I think right, ar right around the uh, 6.0 earthquake there in Fiji it just sharply dropped off uh, with no further activity throughout the uh, rest of the day. The uh, Yellowstone region things uh, looking pretty calm not a whole lot of movement at all here on this map on this uh, overview of Yellowstone a little bit of activity on the northwest corner uh, but overall, things pretty quiet, folks. I want to show you guys the solar weather activity, too. Things kind of ramping up here with a G1-class storm. We'll go ahead and check out the uh, uh, info here on this map. As you can see there, uh, up around a G1 storm currently with uh, minor uh, potential issues. The G1-class storms could cause some weak power grid fluctuations uh, and also minor impact on satellite operations are possible. Uh, along with uh, animals, right? Their uh, navigation systems are affected at this in higher levels. Aurora is commonly visible at higher latitudes. Of course, on this map here, on the uh, solar weather map, you can see on the Aurora that uh, significant signature right here indicating that G1 class storm that came in. See the threshold KP index of 5 reached and uh maybe calming down here within the last hour but uh, look for auroras at higher latitudes kicking up here there was a southwestern uh, tilt with this helping to kick up the uh, geomagnetic storming at the higher latitudes visible auroras will be likely around the polar zones once dark outside sunspot activity looking at the sun here it's getting active let me tell you it's been a while since i've seen this type of activity here and this type of growth uh, these still have yet to produce a significant thre uh, threat looks like uh, the c what was that a c let me see here i think it was like a c7 not for sure what was reached here yeah almost an m flare on that date since then we're getting really crackly, if you can say that, if that's the word, really. It's kind of like popcorn on the sun, right? You're getting all these really sharp pokes and and uh, signatures there indicating some uh, heightened activity. Most of it is sea level threat, flare, uh, flare threat. Nothing has reached the M level yet or X, but there is still that possibility with uh, the ongoing development of these sunspots. 75% uh, chance of a C flare, 20% chance of an M flare. And the X flare still still stands at five percent, uh, but looking at this looking at this image here, it's it's looking uh, crazy. I mean, we got sunspots popping up all over the place, even behind this trail here. So I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see what these are going to be doing in the coming days, even if they are stretching and will be turning away from Earth as they rotate this way. Um, it's still got, oh, there's a whole bunch behind it that we need to pay attention to uh, with new storm development or at least sunspot development, uh, which will be turning towards the face of the earth. But that's a pretty significant amount of sunspots kicking up here compared to what we had seen. So what what else we got here, folks? Uh, looks like at least at least tonight we got the uh, potential for uh, the auroras calming down over the next couple of days, but uh, things can dr they can definitely drastically change in the blink of an eye uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, solar weather storms. What else we got here? Uh, let's see what else is going on in the world, folks. A whole lot of craziness, that's for sure. 
uh, volcano status here in the Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check out the Hawaii earthquakes real quick. I always tend to skip over them unless there's some dramatic uh, activity kicking up. But over the last 24 hours here, just uh, the southeast region seen some uh, typical movement around that 32, 35 kilometer depth. Not a whole lot of activity off the coast of the Big Island. One little earthquake around the Loihi Seamount to the southeast at 2.1 at 16 kilometers. Uh, but no major swarming going on and no oddball activity uh, at the volcanoes currently as far as the active volcanoes go. Uh, Kilauea still producing some uh, uh, some lava and whatnot there. A complete update can be found at the USGS.gov volcanoes website. A lot of information here on, uh, well, deformation, gas, and whatnot. Pretty cool monitoring site here when it comes to uh, checking out all the activity. Some of this doesn't work. Some of it does. Just got to find the stuff that does work and uh, go from there. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have a great night. Uh, it's got some more rain and snow coming into California. Looks like the center part of the country. Um, looks like Kansas, Oklahoma area going to be cooking for uh, Christmas. I know it's been an odd year weather-wise, but uh, I'm I'm liking it because it's keeping the West Coast. We're getting those uh, those low-level troughs and the jet stream just really hitting California this year, this winter, with uh, some some awesome rainfall and some snowfall, cold temperatures, fog almost every day. It's uh, it's my type of weather and kind of what I'm uh, enjoying so sorry to the folks back east but man, I don't want it to be 70 or 80 here in California we had a couple winters like that with uh, very minimal rainfall and that's not uh, that's not good for this area definitely not good for someone who loves weather right all right guys have a good night uh, like I say watch Alaska a lot of deeper movement into the subduction zone west coast has gone completely quiet uh, just something to watch pretty closely here. We've seen a lot of migration here to the west with some large-scale movement and some deep earthquake activity with a blockage here of movement around the Laos area with that 5.6 area, uh, 5.6 earthquake. So a couple areas to watch throughout the western part uh, over here and also the uh, just the west coast right now in Alaska. A whole lot of movement up north, but nothing going on here at all for the most part in the states all right guys have a good night peace out and enjoy your the rest of the weekend whatever's left and uh, have a safe happy monday